speaking of racism, and you're quite right, the Democrats are really pulling out the race card now because Donald Trump improved the percentage of black vote from 8% to 12% from 2016 to 2020. That's a 50% increase and they are scared to death. In 27, Gallup did a poll. Obama's running for the nomination against Hillary and uh, uh, Mitt Romney's running for the nomination on the Republican side against John McCain. What percentage of Americans, uh, Gallup asked, would not vote for somebody who's black? 5%. What percentage would not vote for somebody who's a woman? 11%. Hmm. What percentage would not vote for somebody who's a Mormon? 24%. What percentage would not vote for somebody who would be 72 when he became president, and that'd be John McCain? 42%. So Obama had a lower hurdle than these what, three white politicians. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Grow up. Knock it off. Person, especially during lockdowns, I would go to a lot of the rallies to open up the state, and I was meeting, you know, people that own restaurants and people that own businesses that they were not political. They certainly were not Republicans, but they were mugged, basically mugged by reality, and they were going, "I just want to go to work." I have a feeling a lot of them can be broken, and they can move to say the conservative side or Republican or Larry Elder thing. But what do you think? Is, do you think there's something else you got to do to get them to make that final jump? Well, that's why I need the money. I, I need to be on television. California is a big, big, big state, and you need to be on TV and you need to be on radio. But Dave, it doesn't take long to find horror stories. Um, I mean, literally, they just come up to you. I don't even have to, to go look for them. The other day, I'm shooting a commercial for my um, for my ads for for, uh, for for running for office. Makeup lady's putting stuff on me. We're both bored, waiting for them to set everything up. So I'm talking. I said, well, "Tell me about you." And she goes, "Well, I'm a single mom." And I have a 17-year-old son. He is one of the top 25 wrestlers in California for his weight class. Was wrestling six days a week, and his coach was his father figure. The coach begged them not to shut down the school and, and to keep these, one of these kids to keep having the structure they were having. So now the kid is in the home with his mom, cooped up month after month after month after month. Kid becomes morose, becomes sullen. He had enough integrity and a good enough relationship with his mom that he went up to her and said, Mom, I feel suicidal. He's now in therapy. Another person on my campaign had had a brother living in Oakland. Had is the is is important word. He was a football coach, white guy. Most of all his players are black, coming from fatherless homes. He was their father figure. They practiced six days a week. He gave them structure. Begged them not to shut down the school system. These kids need to have structure. Two of them got into trouble with the law, one of whom had committed a crime so serious he's going to be in prison for years. It would not have had to happen, in his opinion, had they had the same structure that he had before. He got so ticked off, he's now in Tennessee, resuming his football coaching career. They're not here. I read a piece in the L.A. Times a day or two ago about you. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was something like Trump acolyte, something like that, Larry Elder's thing. And it ends in the most... I mean, it's, the media is so awful. Like, nothing surprises me at this point. But like the last line was in effect, and there was Larry Elder once again defending white people. Something to that effect. I'm loosely quoting it. She, she also she also said Larry has been uh, falsely using crime stats about yeah. black people. Didn't say what crime stats I was falsely using. And the one she's talking about yeah. is when I told her yeah. that the number one uh, cause of preventable death for young white men is accidents, like car accidents, drowning accidents. The number one cause of preventable death for young black men is homicide, almost always at the hands of another young black man. Now, unless you're prepared to say black people are just genetically inclined to commit more crime, you have to ask yourself, what the blank is going on here? And the answer is fatherless homes. There's a the direct line between all these problems we're talking about and kids coming from homes without a father. And forget about elder, I think I gave you this stat before. Obama once said a kid raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of, uh, of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in, in prison. Now, how have we gone from 25% of black kids being born outside of wedlock in 1965 to 70% now? You're telling me that America's more racist now than it was in 1965? And the answer is a welfare state. What we've done- Well, their answer would be yes, but your answer is a welfare <laughs> yeah, yeah. state, right? They would say yes, it's because America kept getting more racist. Yeah, kept getting more racist like that, after Obama gets elected and reelected. It's kind right. of a tough argument to make, but, but they make that argument. Yeah. And the fact is, we've incentivized women to marry the government, and we've allowed men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. That's why we have these problems. And speaking of racism, and you're quite right, the Democrats are really pulling out the race card now, because Donald Trump improved the percentage of black vote from 8% to 12% from 2016 to 2020. That's a 50% increase, and they are scared to death. In 27, Gallup did a poll. Obama's running for the nomination against Hillary, and uh, uh, Mitt Romney's running for the nomination on the Republican side against John McCain. What percentage of Americans, uh, Gallup asked, would not vote for somebody who's black? 5%. What 
What percentage would not vote for somebody who's a woman? 11%. Hmm. What percentage would not vote for somebody who's a Mormon? 24%. What percentage would not vote for somebody who would be 72 when he became president, and that'd be John McCain? 42%. So Obama had a lower hurdle than these what, three white politicians. <laughs> what are we talking about here? Grow up. Knock it off. There's a, there's a sociologist at Harvard. He's still there. His name is Orlando Patterson. Back in 1991, he said, America, despite its flaws, is the least racist majority white society in the world, provides more opportunities for all for blacks than any other country in the world, including all of those of Africa. That was 1991, well before Obama got elected. Last time I was on CNN, I reminded Don Lamont of a, <laughs> of, a, of, a, of, a, of a poll study that was done by Time Magazine and CNN of black teens and white teens. They asked them both, is racism a major problem in America? And both of them said yes. And then they asked a follow-up question to the black teens. I've never seen anybody do this before. Is racism a big problem, a minor problem, or no problem in your own daily life? 89% of black teens said it was a minor problem or no problem in my own daily life. In mm. fact, twice as many black teens said, quote, failure to take advantage of available opportunities is a bigger problem than racism, end of quote. That was 23 years ago. What are we talking about here? Knock it off. Knock it off. These guys are playing the race card because they know that they have to scare a 13% of black people and a bunch of liberal white people uh, into believing that racism remains a major problem because they pulled that lever for them 90, 95% until Donald Trump came along and said, what do you have to lose? Larry, you've, scared you've to death. blown me away once or twice over the years, but are you telling me that the conservatives are not racist? <laughs> are, you, are you telling me that the conservatives don't hate gay people and that the conservatives generally want to live and let live? Is that, is that what you're dropping that's, right that's here? What I, that's what I'm saying. Uh, most people want people to realize their potential. Why would it be in anybody's best interest for a group of people to be, to, to perceive them as racist. How is that making things better? Don't you want everybody to be law-abiding, uh, uh, drug-abstaining, tax-paying people? Doesn't that make everything good? Uh, and whenever I ask people about systemic racism, and I, and I always say, can you, get, can you name names? What do you get, David Duke? After that, after that, the list is pretty short, isn't it? Yeah. Give me the name. Who in Congress on the Republican side is systemically racist? Give me the name, give me the name. And sometimes they say Trump. Are you kidding me? Best economy ever under Trump. Uh, he pardoned Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight champion that, that Obama didn't do, despite the fact that Ken Burns, the lefty uh, documentarian, came to Obama and said, please pardon this guy, didn't do it. Sylvester Stallone, please pardon the guy, didn't do it. Uh, Trump does it. He also uh, commuted the sentence of a woman named Alice Johnson, who had done a I very long, long uh, nonviolent drug offense. Uh, he put permanent funding of historically black colleges on for 10-year footing. No one else had done that before. Expanded opportunity zones, dropping some of the rules and regulations in distressed areas so that you, you invite more business. If he is a racist, he needs to go back to racism school. When you were watching the State of the Union and he mentioned lowest black unemployment of all time and then to watch the Congressional Black Caucus go sit like there that, like yeah. this, right. like to me that was everything that you've preached about in your 40 years doing this. How, how many years have you been on air at this point? Uh, 27. 27, I, I gave you an extra 14. But you in know, all of those black, years- Black don't crack. <laughs> I, I know I, know I look really good. I know I look really good. good. But, but when you watch that moment, it must have just been like, man, I have been screaming about this stuff. Here's the guy doing this stuff, and they dare sit there. But it's just one little example. They've been doing this for years. Uh, Obama's mom sent him back from Indonesia when he was 10 years old to eventually go to Punahou, the finest prep school in the state of, of Hawaii, because she wanted him to have better education. Michelle Obama did not go to a charter school. They didn't exist then, but she did not go to the, her local go government school because it was so bad. She got on a bus and went to a much better school, Ice Cube, the rapper. Uh, he didn't go to his local uh, government school. He went to Taft, which at the time was predominantly white. So what are they telling you? They're telling you they want choice, but you don't get choice. And they're beholden to the teachers' union that adamantly opposes choice for all the reasons I just now mentioned. They don't get their automatic dues from the teachers' union, and therefore they, it threatens them. They couldn't care less about the quality of education. And I mentioned the 300,000 teachers uh, in, in, uh, in, uh, in public school teachers in California, and the average year only 2.2 are fired. Imagine... I told you between five and seven percent of them are perceived to be incompetent. There are 20,000 cops here in, in, uh, in LA. Imagine if five percent of them were bad cops. That's a thousand cops on the streets. We wouldn't put up with it. Yeah. We put up with 15,000 bad teachers. Who wants to do something about that? We do. They don't. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.